Do you have $15? Do you have a smartphone? Well, if you live in the US, that's all you need to get started in ham radio. You don't even need a radio. It is easy too. So in this video, I'm gonna do three things. I'm gonna explain how to turn $15 into a ham radio license. I'm gonna explain the apps and websites you can use on a smartphone to participate in the ham radio hobby. And finally, I'm gonna make a contact using my iPhone as a ham radio. This is gonna be fun. Let's get going. In the United States, ham radio licenses are issued by the FCC. They're free and they last for 10 years. Now, most places you're gonna take the exam, you do have to take it in person, you can't take it online. They're gonna charge you a small fee, usually $15 to administer the test, submit re your results, and help you get your license. Okay, so how do you get the license? There are a ton of resources available for you to study and take your test. It's so easy, children do it all the time. Personally, I decided on Wednesday I wanted my ham radio license. I took a test that Saturday and passed it. It's essentially to get your technician's class license. It's a pool of about 400 questions, just over 400 questions, and they're all published online. There's lots of ways for you to study. I suggest you get an app for your phone. Hamstudy.org has apps that will help you take practice tests, learn the answers to the questions, and review every question in the pool. Makes it really simple. But if you don't feel like just memorizing answers or learning a little bit about it, you can go to your local library and get a ham radio book. You can buy one, of course, on Amazon or any number of other places. Or you can watch YouTube videos. There's lots of instructional videos on getting your technician's class license. Listen, if you're interested in the ham radio hobby and you're waiting because you're afraid to take the test or you think it's gonna to be too much studying, stop. It's easy. It doesn't take that much time. A couple hours a day for a week, you're gonna be able to pass your test. It's 35 multiple choice questions and you only gotta get 27 right. Honestly, don't let it stop you from getting in the hobby. Cost $15, lots of different ways to study the material, to learn the material, and practice taking the test so you know you'll pass when it comes to, to taking it. Now, the cool thing about taking the test is technician's class license gets you access to about this much of the ham radio hobby. If you're ambitious, you can study for both the technician and the general license tests and take them on the same day. Heck, you could even do all three. There's three classes of license. You could do all three and it has been done. That might be a little, a bit much to take on. So take your technician class license test, maybe study for your general and try that while you're sitting down. They're not gonna charge you an additional $15 if you take it at the same time. Okay, so where do you find to take the test? I'm gonna put a link down below in the description to the ARRL website that has a list of all the places you can sit down and take your test. You can find one in your area. If you can't find one close, look up, see on, do an internet search, see if there's a local ham radio club. They'll probably do testing. And in worst case scenario, look for ham fests in your area. Search your city or wherever you are with ham fest. Oftentimes at a ham fest or ham get togethers, they'll do testing there as well. So lots of ways to find take the test, lots of ways to study. Don't let it stop you from becoming a ham. Okay, so you've got your technician's class ham radio license. How are you gonna use your smartphone to participate in a hobby? Well, there is one great app and it's free. It's called Echolink. And Echolink will allow you to connect to repeaters all over the world. You're gonna be using your voice like a speakerphone, just like a speakerphone, you're gonna connect to a repeater and your voice is gonna come out via RF and anyone with a ham radio or monitoring that echo link repeater will be able to hear you and you'll be able to have a conversation with them. It really is just that easy. You have to be a licensed ham to use echo link. And once you have the app, you can use it on your smartphone. You can use it on your desktop. And like I said, you can connect to repeaters all over the country, all over the world and talk to hams. It's a great way to do ham radio. There's another app you should get as well. It's called aprs.fi. 
APRS.FI, and I'll put links in the description. APRS is a great system for ham radio. It's called Automatic Packet Reporting System. What it would allow you to do from your app is very simply to beacon your position, your GPS position. If you're going on a hike or a road trip, you can set it to beacon every 10, 15 minutes, and your friends and family can log into APRS.FI Put in your call sign and see exactly where in the world you are and maybe even read some little messages that you put in. In addition to that, you can use the APRS.FI app to see local weather. People set up weather stations in their backyard and they report it to APRS.FI. I've got one just two miles away. Anytime I want to know the temperature or how much rain has fallen or the dew point, I can just go to APRS.FI, hit that station and get the latest weather report. There's lots of other things APRS can do but those are the basics. Oh, and by the way, if you have a friend who's a ham and he has APRS, you can send them messages via the APRS system right to his handheld ham radio. Super cool. The last thing you should do is go to Web SDR. And I'll put a link again into the description. Web SDR. SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. And what people do is they set up these software defined radios and they put them on the internet for you to control. It's a real ham radio. You can't transmit, it's listen only. But you can tune in and listen to all the ham bands. It's that simple. You can just go to the website, select a station, and then you tune it. You can go to 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters. You can listen to UHF, VHF in some cases. Different sites have different capabilities, but if you wanna listen to HF ham radio, you can do it using web SDR. It's super cool and it's really very easy. And you can do it anytime. Personally, I use web SDR. I'll look at a station maybe in Pennsylvania or somewhere else when I'm doing portable work just to see if my signal's getting out and can be heard by that station. So that's just an example of three apps, Echolink, APRS.FI, and bookmark web SDR. I believe it's .org, but I'll put a link in the description. That's how you can use ham radio from your smartphone. Before I try to make a contact using Echolink on my smartphone, I just want to give a word to people who are either thinking or going to put in my comments that Echolink isn't real ham radio. And I'll just say, leave it alone. Honestly, if people want to enjoy the hobby, uh, want to enjoy UHF, VHF by using Echolink and talking to other people, let them be. This iPhone is a radio. It uses RF to go to the cell tower. And then when I transmit into a repeater, it's using RF on the other end as well. Yes, it's VOIP, voice over internet protocol in between. You are using the internet, but you know what? It's RF on both sides. And if somebody wants to get involved with the hobby and they're on a budget or they're a kid and can't afford a radio right now, or they don't want to spend the money on a hobby they're not sure about, Let's not scare them away by telling them it's not real radio, because it is. And ham radio is so big. There's so many things to do in ham radio. If somebody wants to enjoy Echolink, let them. Save your comments for something else. Enjoy ham radio the way you enjoy it. Let others enjoy it the way they want to enjoy it. All right, so we've discussed turning $15 into your ham radio license that's good for 10 years. We've discussed a couple apps and a website that you can use to participate in the ham radio hobby once you have that license. And now we're going to make a contact. But first, I'm going to give you a couple tips on using Echolink. Number one, when you first get Echolink set up, whether it be on your PC or your phone or your tablet, whatever, the first station you're gonna to wanna to connect to is called Echo Test. And if you search by station, you can just put it in the search bar Echo Test or you can search through the E's and find it yourself. You're gonna to wanna to connect to that. And it's as simple as hitting the connect button. Welcome to the Echo Link test server. This server records your transmissions and plays them back to help you adjust your transmitted and received audio. Please feel free to connect as often as you like. So that's it. All it does is record your audio and play it back to you. This tests your microphone, your levels, your sound quality, and get a good idea of what you're going to sound like when you connect to a real repeater. So let's just make a test transmission, see what I sound like. 
This is K4BBL, Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima, test transmission on Echo Link. Testing, testing. This is K4BBL, Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima, test transmission on Echo Link. Testing, testing. It's just that easy. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to search through my stations and I'm going to find my local repeater because I'll probably be able to get a contact that way. I'm just going to type in NF4GA. The way you find repeaters and know which is a repeater and which is a node, which is a station, a person on Echolink is repeaters are going to have a gear symbol and they're going to have the dash R behind them. So it's pretty simple. So I'm going to connect to NF4GA. Once you're connected to the repeater, it's a very, very good idea to listen for a while. Make sure the repeater isn't in use to make sure somebody isn't using it for something. Uh, you know, different nets can happen on repeaters and so on. Uh, so just listen for at least a minute, maybe two, before you hit the transmit button, especially if it's a repeater you're not familiar with uh, in another country or another state. Just listen first before hitting transmit. All right. So doesn't sound I've been listening to this for a little bit now it doesn't sound like anyone in my club is using the repeater right now I'm connected hopefully there's somebody monitoring I'm gonna go ahead and make my call k4 BBL testing echo link k4 BBL is anyone out there I'm making a YouTube video about echo link k4 BBL calling anyone KN4 DLE. This is K4BBL. Brian here in Milton. I appreciate you coming back to me. Uh, I'm in downtown Crab Apple, and uh, like I said, I'm making a YouTube video about Echo Link. I'm actually using my smartphone as a radio, showing people how you can do that. Over to you. Yeah, Bill, I've done that too. I've checked into uh, Nets, the tech net on this repeater on Monday nights when I'm out on the road traveling. You're absolutely right. It's a great way to uh, keep up with the local stuff. And I've even checked into Nets in other states as well uh, just to see what they're talking about. There's some interesting Nets around the country that you can uh, check out. Uh, a Net for, for people in the audience here. A Net is a conference or a meeting that is held on a repeater. Uh, people with radios check in, they have uh, discussions about certain topics, uh, that's a net. So yeah, so uh, I believe in Echolink too, and I'm just telling people that for $15 uh, and their smartphone, they can get into the hobby. Back to you. Absolutely. Well, I just want to check in real quick. Uh, I want to go ahead and drop here. I, uh really like Echo Link. I think it's a great way to listen to things, not only in your local net. Uh, also want to mention that when uh, when we had some of the weathers come up, uh, some of the hurricanes and some of the storms throughout the southeast, you could actually use Echo Link to access not only the weather net, uh, but then also access some of the local repeaters down around Florida and a few other ways. So it was uh, always interesting to be able to listen to the local traffic, not only while I'm away, but also be able to listen to local traffic in different parts of the country. So this is KN4 DLE. I'm going to be clear on your final.
KN4DLE, thanks again for coming back to me. I appreciate it and really good information. Thanks for sharing uh, your thoughts on Echo Link. I appreciate it. You can check out uh, my YouTube channel. It's uh, Ham Radio in Action. I'll probably post this uh, later today or tomorrow. Uh, you can see what you sound like on my end through my iPhone ham radio here. But thanks again. I appreciate it. Uh, KN4DLE, this is K4BBL, and I'm clear. 7-3 to you. That's it. That's how easy it is. I just picked it up. I didn't do any editing. I waited that long for somebody to get back to me. Now, he's on a handheld radio or maybe a mobile radio, I'm not sure, in the area, not too far away from me. But it could have just as been uh, as easy to connect with somebody on the other side of the country uh, in a different part of the world. It really is just that easy. It's a great way to take part in the ham radio hobby. So don't let the test stop you from getting into the hobby. $15 and a smartphone is all you need to get started. Now, please keep in mind that repeaters, UHF, VHF operation is just a small part of the hobby. There's so much more to it. If chit-chatting with other hams on a repeater isn't your thing, believe me, there's much, much more to do. And you can see all the different things uh, that Ham Radio has to offer on YouTube. Hey, thank you for watching. Uh, watch out for uh, new videos coming from me. I really appreciate you watching the video and good luck.